Good evening, everybody. Many apologies for the fact that I'm not there with you tonight. Um, Russ probably just told you that uh, myself and several teachers, as well as the whole of grade eight, uh, ended up having to go home yesterday because of a positive COVID case. Uh, in a way, though, this is actually a great way to start this presentation, um, just because it shows, again, the kind of challenges we've been dealing with over the last few years. Uh, we're now in our third school year in which we've been dealing with the complexities of the pandemic. Um, and yesterday, we were able to take a whole grade level off campus and then have them back online, ready for class 20 minutes later, uh, depending on traffic. Not only that, I could also teach my grade seven class who were on campus and in the classroom from home. Uh, of course, none of this is ideal, uh, and it is an ongoing and exhausting challenge, but we're very proud of how we managed to keep the teaching and learning going and adapt to these changing circumstances. While dealing with all of these challenges, however, we continue to do the work necessary to help our programs improve and evolve. Education and schools are not static entities. And so educators are continuously busy behind the scenes, uh, working on all aspects of the curriculum, the pedagogy, the approaches to assessment, the policies, the systems, the structures necessary to provide the best possible education that we can for our students. So I'm going to give you a little look behind the scenes, uh, some of the things we're working on and some of the significant achievements uh, we're making. The vast majority of our work is driven by our identity as an international baccalaureate world school and being part of the global community of IB schools, educators, students and families. The International Baccalaureate and the three IB programs that we're proud to implement at this school give us the philosophy, the direction, and the sense of purpose that every good school needs. Uh, and so we're very happy that we'll go through an IB evaluation visit towards the end of next academic year. Uh, this is going to be our opportunity to share and to celebrate the things that we have been working on since the last evaluation visits uh, with the representatives from the IB and to get some feedback from them that will continue to drive us forward as a school. And so that visit will take place in April, May next year, uh, although we're not quite sure whether it will be conducted online or whether they will come to Mozambique and spend time on the campus with us. We're hoping they'll do that. Uh, there'll be many opportunities for community involvement in the lead up to and during the visit, and our IB coordinators will share the details of those opportunities with you in the next few months. Uh, the visiting team will be looking at our school through the lens of this document, the new IB standards and practices. And this is the blueprint for a high quality IB school. Uh, and we've been using it to guide our work for the last couple of years. You will become increasingly familiar with this document over the next few months and into next year. Uh, but I'm going to get that started by using the structure and the color scheme of the document for the rest of this presentation in order to share some highlights of, of the work that we are doing. So the first section of the IB standards and practices is purpose. And that is the mission of IB schools. One of the biggest things the IB expects the school to have is a pedagogical leadership team that embraces and advocates for educational approaches that are aligned with IB philosophy, standards and practices. Uh, at AISM, we're very fortunate to have assembled an IB coordination team, Taryn, Mike and Sandeep. Uh, that is not only leading our staff very effectively in that direction, uh, but it's also a source of inspiration for other IB schools around the world. Um, other schools are watching AISM and are taking note of the work that we're doing here. The second section of the IB standards and practices is environment. That is the essential structures, systems and resources of an IB school. A major part of this is the ongoing professional learning that is needed for IB educators in order to refine their practice and stay up to date with educational developments. 
So far this year, uh, educators on our PYP faculty or primary faculty have attended 30 workshops. Uh, educators on our secondary faculty have attended 26 workshops and educators from both faculties have attended 18 workshops. Uh, Ian and Joe will give you a bit more detail about those workshops shortly. A second uh, important part of this section of the IB standards and practices is collaboration. The IB expects teachers in each of the three IB programs to collaborate effectively in order to implement the programs and for the school to provide time and other resources to enable this to happen. So um, our PYP teachers get together frequently in order to design units, plan for teaching and learning, develop assessment tools and strategies, look at student work and analyze data. Because of the nature of the primary schedule, they are able to do this several times per week during the school day, as well as in the two faculty meetings on Tuesday and Thursday. Taryn and the members of the primary leadership team play a key role in facilitating these sessions, as well as providing the systems, structures and resources that teachers need in order to be able to do the work. Much of this work is driven by the new planning processes that we've designed in order to move closer to the philosophy and practices of the PYP uh, as they are described in the enhanced PYP documentation and in the standards and practices. In the MYP and diploma, opportunities to collaborate during the school day are more limited just because of the complexities of scheduling and teachers working in different departments. However, with the guidance of Mike and Sandeep and Ian and the heads of department, the culture and habits of collaboration are developing rapidly in the secondary school as teachers find time to get together to go through our new unit design processes to plan for teaching and learning, to analyze assessment data and to develop curriculum during the school day, as well as during the two faculty meetings on Tuesday and Thursday. The third section of the IB standards and practices is culture and in particular the creation of positive school cultures through policy implementation. A significant amount of policy work was required in the school in order to make sure our policies aligned with the updated expectations of the IB as well as with developments that have taken place in the world of education globally since the last policies were created. So we are deeply engaged in uh, the processes of reviewing and updating policy and our new assessment policy shown here uh, is complete and ready for publication. And for more IB mandated policies, the admissions policy, the academic integrity policy, the language policy, and the inclusion policy are currently in draft form and will be complete and ready for publication by the end of this school year. Uh, finalizing these five policies will be a, a huge milestone for us and they will play a major part in ensuring that the way things are done in our school is very clear to all stakeholders. The final, but also the largest section of the IB standards and practices is learning, uh, ensuring an effective education. And learning in IB schools is based on a coherent curriculum. And this is something that has been a major focus uh, for us for the past three years or so, as we continue to strive for an effective and powerful curriculum. Uh, that organizes teaching and learning across the years of our IB programs from PYP to diploma. This is a complex task as our curriculum should also be appropriate to our students, uh, to our community and to the changing needs of society. Our written curriculum for English language shown here is complete and ready for publication. A huge amount of work has been put into updating our written curriculum for mathematics, and this is also complete and ready for publication. Our science written curriculum has also had a complete makeover, 
And based on the next generation science standards is a significant and exciting development for the evolution of that subject in our school and uh, our Sci uh, social studies and individuals and societies written curriculum is also complete and ready for publication. Uh, while we do, of course, have written curriculum for the remaining subject areas, some of which are shown there, uh, work still needs to be done so that we have a coherent curriculum for all disciplines that we're truly happy with and proud of. Uh, and this will be completed by the end of the school year so that the entire curriculum handbook can be published and easily accessible by all stakeholders. Uh, we know how important it is for parents to be able to see and understand what their children are learning each year. A second major focus of this part of the IB standards and practices is collaborative unit design, and in particular, the design of units of study that meet the requirements of each of the IB programs and are in accordance with program documentation. All learning in the PYP, MYP and diploma programs at our school is organized into units of study. The expectation is that these units of study are designed to focus on the development of conceptual understanding. So, uh, in each of the programs at AISM, with the guidance of the principals, IB coordinators, grade level leaders, and heads of department, teachers are engaging a huge amount of time and energy uh, in new unit design processes that have been specifically structured to guide them through the discipline of selecting the learning outcomes in our written curriculum that will form the foundation of the unit, and these are typically knowledge-based or process-based. Uh, we then identify the concepts, the big ideas that can be found in the language of each of those outcomes. And following that, we start to generate the conceptual understandings that we will support the students in developing. And finally, we bring all of this together with one or more generalizations that capture the essence of the unit. Of course, this is not a simple process. Uh, it requires discipline in following the unit design processes that we have established, and it requires a great deal of mental exertion. It requires deliberation and negotiation, uh, and most of all, it, it requires time. Um, time, which, as I referred to earlier, has been created and is being found by our faculty as they dig deeper and deeper into the methodology that is expected by the International Baccalaureate. So that's a little look behind the scenes at some of the work we're doing. Uh, as always, I'm very happy to, happy to answer any questions you might have about our curriculum and educational programs. Apologies, I'm not there for, to uh, answer those questions live, but as always, I'm, I'm very happy for you to get in touch with me, and there's my email. Thanks and good night.